What's for everybody in the CMP with Craft Master Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com Don't forget to stop by Studio1Tutorials and pick up your premium membership in 50 cents a day And don't forget to stop by Studio1Tutorials, hit the Buy Sounds tab and get Scorpion Arrangement Arsenal It is all the arrangements from Side A of Drake's Scorpion album breaking streaming records all over the place why wouldn't you want to dissect those arrangements they're there for you on studio one tutorials.com they were created in studio one three which means they open in studio one three and studio one four so you are bueno now today we're going to be diving into uh, another chapter in the beginner's video manual this one is going to be on transforming audio this is one of my favorite 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 features in studio one like when i'm working in live i this is probably the thing that i miss the most um there are th there's a couple different ways to transform um midi to audio um in studio one and they all have their place and their purpose now um the first one well let's talk about why you would want to do this um a lot of you guys are um super attached to midi and fucking fear audio with like the fear of god like oh my god i'm not gonna be able to go back and change my melody and what if i forget the preset what if I to like bruh calm down okay it's no big deal so um the first thing why you want to do this is maybe you're working on uh you know maybe you're working on the computer that uh grandma ann got you for uh you know got you for college and she got you the best word processor laptop uh of all time and it could really crush you know ms word and mla format papers however running a doll you know it needs it, it needs a little bit more juice and you know you you hit me up and you're like hey man um you know i'm making beats and you know i keep on getting all these pops and clicks and you know it's because your computer is underpowered for um for modern production but you can still use it uh you just have to use it like uh you know like a, like a rapper or singer songwriter would use it where you're just processing audio because most computers nowadays um I, I would say all computers nowadays the, the i5s everything like they could run a DAW um doing straight audio it's when they it's when you get into midi and all these complex libraries where you get those pops and clicks so um i remember back uh back in um you know when i started when i started um producing uh on a computer mostly i was running like an old mac it was i3 uh running logic and by the time i got like three instances of vsts deep it would start with the pops and clicks so what i would do what was i would write my parts in midi and then and then um transform them to audio bounce in place is what the function was in logic 9 so if you're having if you're having cpu spikes and I, I mean i get it on this computer when i you know when i go deep with omnisphere but if you're getting cpu spikes bouncing to audio uh, will get rid of those cpu spikes because it, the cpu is spiking because it's it's reading the vsts um another reason why you might use it is if you wanted to like reverse a melody like do like playboy cardi type of stuff um you know it's 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 uh you're gonna need to um you know you're gonna need to have audio in order to be able to do that um another reason why, why you might do it is because you're making a b section and you want to put half time on it so just there's a few reasons right so let's go through them um for the purpose of of saving cpu um what i like to do is it, it, all you got to do is like click and highlight the ones you want to the the midi regions that you want to use and then um you right click on them and you will go to musical fun i'm sorry you go to event and you go bounce uh bounce selection right and when it, it and what that does is it will is it will uh transform each one of the tracks to audio individually and this is this is an improvement that studio one made i think it was like a 3.5 or 3.6 where not only did they did they make it to where um to where you can uh you can you can bounce audio but they also made it so that the new track keeps your uh, keeps your routing right so i i, I route these uh these um 
these um channels to the band bus and when and i and, and when i bounce them they're automatically routed now bouncing what bouncing does is it takes everything everything that you have on the uh on the insert channel so any plugins that you have on this insert channel and it is going to it's 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 gonna it's gonna write those to audio what it's not gonna do is your your reverb sends and your echo sends and all the anything that you use from a send it's not gonna record that so what you need to do is you know your same settings that you had from your sends on on your original track you'll need to duplicate those over to your um to your new audio track and um you know once uh, what i do is once i have those bounced out um you know for you guys that are all like uh super afraid that the world's gonna end if you bounce the audio all you gotta do man is just click hide track and it's gone and then if you need to come back and change something then you can engage those tracks you're still saving cpu because you you know you don't have you're not reading all that midi at the same time and you could you know recall the preset change the melody do whatever you want to do so there's nothing to worry about there um the next thing the next thing that i like to do let's get those tracks back all right man if you don't stop Okay, so kind of the, the next, the uh, another reason why I like it is because I do a lot of bus processing or I, I stack a lot of layers like this, for example. So say if I have, uh, you know, say if I'm, I'm going through my, you know, my template and I have like, I have like a half time on this. And then I want to throw a looperator on it too. So say I did that and, um, you know, I just wanted to do that. I just wanted to do that for a piece of the song and I didn't want to get into, you know, like over automating it or anything. Um, what I would do is I, I would just take all of these and um, go to event and then I'll go to mix down selection. Now, what mix down selection does is is it, uh, it if, if you're familiar with studio ones um the way they name stuff their language mix down is bouncing a track so that's what happens when um when studio one prints the output of the main fader so this is this is different from bouncing in that bouncing only outputs the uh the output of the of the of the channel that you've selected and mix down is whatever whatever you highlight right and you and, and and you select mix down it's going to it's it's going to print the output of that fader and you don't have to you know you don't have to solo anything or, or you know st stuff like that it, it just as long as you select it within within the arrangement it's going to do that so now you'll hear the halftime effects here let's uh We'll turn off. We'll turn off halftime. And this is this is a question I used to get a lot. So we'll turn off halftime and looperator now, and you'll hear it. So like the main reason why I would do this, and I, I did it on a track yesterday, is you know if I use if I use this uh, this filter, you hear um for example this filter completely changes the um the uh the sound of the highs it's 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 cutting lows and it's introducing highs now i've got these three instrument and if i'm just using this for a section to make like a b section or something like that these these instruments um they're gonna have a completely different relationship with the mix um when they're transformed into this sound so rather than automating it because i know you can automate it but because it changes the mix so much 
I would rather have its own track. So now, um, so now I can put plugins to compensate for what those for what those frequencies are doing, make it sit in the mix better. Um, if I was to do that through automation, I would have to automate all those plugins to turn on when when halftime and looperator turn on, and it's just it, it it's unnecessary. This is way faster. And then on top of that, you know, you could you could take this and start using you know different audio effects. You can reverse it if you want to. You know, um, whatever you wanted to do. Now, a couple notes, uh, especially about bouncing in place, right? Bouncing in place, it's going to it's going to work per region, right? So if I if I and what I mean by that, if I had this doubled out right here and this was the whole length of the song, it's going to bounce this four bars 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 instead of so instead of bouncing the whole thing so if you needed to do it for the whole track what you would want to do is you'd want to highlight the regions you wanted to bounce go to uh event i believe and then select merge events that way it's and that way it's all one so this is all one region so now when i bounce it it'll bounce the whole region right um Another thing, you know, if you, uh, uh, this is a note about reverse melodies, right? So say I had this, say I had this lined up and I wanted to do a reverse melody here. What's going to happen if I bounce this and reverse it, it's going to play this note first, right? But what if I didn't want that? What if I wanted this section, you know, the, it reversed section by section? Well, that's how, you know, you remember how the actual bounce function works, where it does it region by region. So you just chop these up into individual regions, right? And then we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and bounce them all. All right, so now we have these. So if we go ahead and reverse them in place, <clears throat> just hit Control R. Whereas if we didn't do that, what we want, what we would have wound up coming up with is this right here, and I feel like this would have changed it too much. Right, so, and a lot of times that's what we want when we want a reverse melody. We just want, we want the same, you know, the same motifs and the same timing, but we don't, we just want the actual notes reversed. So chopping up your melody before, you, uh, um, before you bounce it and then reversing those individual parts, that's a really great way to, um, you know, keep the original, um, you, you know, keep the original melodic content, um, that you had before you go and reverse the melody. So you keep the same melody. So yeah, man, hopefully this kind of cleared some stuff up for you guys kind of got the difference between export and bouncing and why you would do it. And some of the advantages of working in audio, hopefully you guys don't uh, wind up so scared about audio. It is a very fun medium to work in because there is, you know, there's different tools to, um, to use to fix and manipulate audio, which leads you to different modes of creation rather than just, endlessly tweaking vsts all day so this is cmp with craft master production studio one tutorials.com keep it simple but don't be basic and we will see you on the next one